Hey everyone, my name is Wedge. I didn't expect it, but today we got more complicated spoilers than we've had on any other day up to this point. With that in mind, we've decided to split today's spoilers into two videos. This is the first of those videos. Any cards not covered in this installment will be in the video coming later on tonight. There is a lot to talk about, seriously, not one boring card today. Lastly, if you enjoy these videos, remember to hit the like button every time you do I smile, like this. We'll start off with Gideon's Phalanx. Warning, a lot of translations in this video. The Phalanx is 5 colorless and 2 white for an instant. Put 4 2 2 white knight tokens with vigilance onto the battlefield. It also has spell mastery. If there are two more instant or sorcery cards in your yard, creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. Well, isn't this just a very Gideon version of Revel of the Fallen God? That card doesn't see play, and unfortunately, I don't think this one will either. Seven mana is just way too much. Even with Spell Mastery, holding up seven mana as an answer to a board wipe seems clunky. I suppose you could top end this as a control finisher, but even then, it's not really a finisher. Lots of decks can deal with a handful of 2-2s. Two I want to like this card, and I'm glad it's instant speed, but dang, that's expensive. Coolest part about this, though? Looks like he's on Ravnica. That's definitely a Boros emblem on that one knight's armor. That's very cool. Now, this card is super weird. Another rough translation. Disciple of the Ring is three colorless and two blue for a three for human wizard. You can pay one mana and exile an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to choose one of the following. Either counter target non-creature spell unless its controller pays two, or the disciple gets plus one plus one until end of turn, or you tap target creature, or you untap target creature. This is no morphling, and that makes me sad. While I do love blue creatures with tons of text, I'm just not sure this one holds up. It isn't that the ability is hard to activate, that doesn't really bother me. What bothers me is that it's a 3-4 for 5 mana that doesn't do that much. What I'm most afraid of is that it'll just be like Ojitai Exemplars. Great card with a lot of utility but nowhere to call home. Oh, a disciple needs a master though, I'm sad now. Talon of the Telepath is 2 colorless and 2 blue for a sorcery. Target opponent reveals the top 7 cards of their library. You may cast an instant or sorcery card from among them without paying its mana cost. Then that player puts the rest into their graveyard. It also has spell mastery. If there are two or more instants and or sorcery cards in your yard, you may cast up to two revealed instants or sorceries instead. Cards like this are always fun, but usually too unpredictable to play in Constructed. The variance is just too high. I feel like this is one of those cards, which sucks because I genuinely think this card is awesome. Getting two free spells for four mana, that's value, especially out of a spell-based deck. Another card that will find its way into commander strategies. Too bad you can't choose yourself. How broken would that be, am I right? Despoiler of Souls is two black mana for a 3 1 horror that can't block. You can pay two black mana and exile two other creature cards from your graveyard to return it from your yard to the battlefield. This is not Icarid, and it isn't Bloodgast, but it's certainly as close as we're going to get. If there's a mono black aggressive strategy in Standard, I can see this in it. You might not use the return ability very often, but something is going to have to block this. Might as well be their carry added. It isn't a warrior or anything cool like that, but it's a two mana cost creature with three power. Could be worse. Not saying it'll be a staple in standard, but I wouldn't be surprised to see it in aggro strategies. Graveblade Marauder is three mana for a one for human warrior with death touch. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, that player loses life equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Wow, this card is way better than you might think at first. Sure, it just has one power, but that's all that matters in combat when you have Death Touch. Assuming you aren't blocked, say hello to the newest high damage source for Sultai Whip strategies. The graveyard is a tool, and the Marauder uses it to its fullest extent. The way I see it, it does a wonderful impression of Guilt Feeder, and I love that card. I want this to see standard play, and it works really well with Seder Wayfinder. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Just such a powerful ability, I'd hate to ignore it. Priest of the Blood Rite, cool name, is three colorless and two black for a 2-2 human cleric. When it enters the battlefield, put a 5-5 black demon creature token with flying onto the battlefield. At the beginning of your upkeep, you lose two life. I've been waiting for another bonkers exploit target for Sidisi, and I think we just got it. The card's crazy. Sure, it's five mana, but who cares when you can get a giant flying demon out of it and another 2-2 body? 
You do lose life per turn, but the upside is so high and you can essentially sack the life loss without getting rid of the huge flyer. Even in standard, it can fight Wingmate Rock, Sea Rhino, Storm Breath Dragon, and Thunderbreak Region. Being a 5-5 flyer is a great place to be right now. Also, for Commander, want something delicious? Alicia players, yeah, have fun. There you have it, the first of our two spoiler videos today. What do you think about these cards? I don't know if it's just me, but I really, really like the Priest of the Blood right. That's just a cool card. I want 5-5 five, five demons. I just do. Don't judge me! S sorry about that. Okay. Anyways, subscribe for the latest and most reliable Magic Origins spoiler information you could ever need. This is the Manosaurus. I'm Wedge. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.